We'll be right back with my new segment, Inside the 45th, with Kev Abizajian, UCI Professor of Physics and Astronomy. So we begin a new segment that I'm happy to launch today. It will be unlike any other segment I've had. And now let us begin with each one of my guests are going to introduce themselves in this segment. I'm Kev Abazajian, and I'm in the 45th. Well, welcome to this brand new segment. I'm so glad that you agreed to do this. You are here at UC Irvine as the professor of physics and astronomy and the director of UCI Center for Cosmology. So in the 45th, Talk about what you want your spokesperson from the 45th to be about. We've got some pretty amazing news coming out of some very exotic, bizarre takes on climate. And that's right up your field. I don't think you, when you first agreed to be in this brand new segment, Kev Abizajian, that you would have a collision with such illiteracy coming out of Texas's congressional district. Yeah, that's what's very important to me in having an elected representative is just to have a really just base understanding of facts and science. And unfortunately, that is not a prerequisite for a lot of elected officials that are coming out of other districts. So I'm really happy that we have a representative that cares about the facts, listens to scientists, and is an expert herself in banking law and consumer finance. So I'm sure listeners are wondering, this is June 2021, and the election is far off, but the actual primary season is only months away, and we don't all know who's going to be filing for this 45th congressional district race. So I want to know, what are you seeing? What kind of a role do you have? What are you formulating is going to be sort of your involvement or what are you hearing? Where are we at this point going into the primary season, Kev Abizajian? Well, we're pretty close to the start of primaries, which will be, I presume, towards the end of this calendar year. We will start seeing opposition candidates from the other party spring up to the 45th Congressional District Congresswoman Katie Porter here. And I predict that they're going to find someone that's going to focus on what the GOP is focusing on now, which is culture wars, identifying someone who is, you know, going to propagate uh, this kind of false dichotomy that our representative is a socialist and they're the, uh, you know, freedom fighters. And when in fact, our representative is just based on reality, while the GOP is really kind of in an alternate universe. I mean, you brought up what uh, came out of the climate action that uh, Rep. Louis Gohmert out of Texas said, which was to modify the orbit of the earth. And one of my colleagues at UC Riverside, Brian Cyana, he did the back of the envelope calculation on how much energy that would take. And it's basically 5 trillion times the annual energy output of all of humanity. So that is just something that is just uh, ridiculous to try to change the orbit of the earth as opposed to going green. So my listeners hear me not sign on to zero sum games. That's a false choice that we can give some resources so that everybody benefits. But I think when Representative Gomert is talking about some bizarre theory, a notion of changing the earth's orbit, that's a zero sum game of his time of our attention and energy on moving productive legislative agendas through. Is, do you see a zero sum with the distraction of a bizarre scientific take with what needs to be done to advocate for Americans' lives? Right, I think that unfortunately, the other side of the aisle has not really spent much time many of them have not spent much time thinking about what it takes to actually create solutions to our climate crisis. And so unfortunately, we're hearing total bizarre takes on how to solve this problem. And and it's not the first, there's others. 
that say just plant some trees, you know, that'll sequester the carbon or we will, you know, geoengineer our way out of this without actually even thinking about that for more than two minutes. So we scientists, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change as an international body and American scientists that have thought about this for a while know that it's going to take converting our entire energy sector to carbon-free and hopefully 100% renewable sources of energy. And soon, I mean, we are very short on time. And I think this is one of the things that activists like Greta Thunberg have highlighted is that we have a carbon budget uh, that is specified in an IPCC report from 2018 that says we have 420 gigatons of carbon left to spend before we hit the threshold of likely going above one and a half degrees Celsius. And if we hit that threshold, then there could be much more dire consequences of the climate crisis. So, you know, and if you do the basic math on that 420 gigatons, that's seven years of output, of annual carbon output from our energy and other sources. And that's a very short period of time to get rid of carbon energy. And so you can, you know, divide it up. You can say, well, let's get to half within seven years. And then it gives us seven years more to get the other half. But that doesn't take into account, you know, if we just say we want to do that in our household, but then maybe we want to do that in our neighborhood. Maybe we want to do that in our city. Maybe we want to do that in our county, in our state. And really we need to do it globally, but you can't point fingers without doing it yourself. So let's do it ourselves and do it right away. And there's another view of this, which is actually us as Western civilization have used way more carbon than other parts of the globe. So really our responsibility is greater than other parts of the globe. So maybe we should actually have a target that's closer than seven or 14 years out and maybe say 20, 30, nine years out that we get to carbon neutral or 100% renewable energy sources. So that's, I think, a goal a lot of people are focusing on and that we're, we're, we're trying to do here at Irvine as well. So let's bring that down. That's super global. It's cosmic. Let's bring it down now to the constituent level in the 45th. What you think are the constituent scorecard items for seeing what the strength of a candidate would be running into this congressional district, knowing, and we know the map is gonna probably change a little tiny bit. The, our 45th congressional district, roughly speaking, is bound by Highway 55, the 91, the 74, and the 73, and the, the spine of the Cleveland National Forest system. So that's the 45th, it'll change a little tiny bit with the redistricting underway, we'll know that sometime by the early fall, I understand, by fall. So what is a scorecard for meeting constituents' needs in the 4-5th that you have in your mind, Kev Abizadjian? I think voters really want to have a representative that they identify with that is a regular person that talks their language and cares about the same things they do. And if that is the person that they see and if they are paying attention to the election, they're going to focus on that person. You know, there's also partisan division, but I think that that's actually a lot smaller than what is like often in the media talked about, because there are people that are super partisan on both sides. But someone like Katie Porter, her magic is that she speaks to everybody. She speaks to the broad middle. She's not focusing on the culture wars like the right wing is. She's not focusing on kind of pie in the sky proposals. She's focused on what we can do, how we can bring oversight to government agencies and also uh, large corporations who are not treating their customers fairly and their employees fairly. So she's really talking about bread and butter issues like kitchen table issues. How are things going in our household budgets? How are things going with our healthcare system? What do we need to do to get out of the COVID era safely and healthily? So all of these things, she is an amazing person in that she kind of talks everyday language, but also really bridges towards those things that are important to those that care for social equity. So raising up those among our community who are in the hardest position. So my final question in this 
short segment with so much that could be otherwise mentioned, Kev Abizajian is, do you see yourself having any kind of a role recognizing that the California 45th Congressional District may be one of the most contested congressional races, as pundits are now beginning to say? Yeah, I think it's going to be a contentious election, and I'm pretty involved locally. I'm the chair of our grassroots local Democrats club called Democrats Greater Irvine. I'm the OC director of the Southern California Army and Democrats, and it's just a way to get involved with the local organizers and, and you know people that are going to beat the ground going door to door and making phone calls and texts to let people know why Katie Porter is doing a great job and should continue to do her job in Washington, D.C. So it's going to be an interesting midterm. I think it's going to take more effort to get people to pay attention to a midterm election as usual. But I think there's a lot of interest in making sure that the 45th continues to be represented by our our wonderful Congresswoman. Well, Kev Abizajian, thank you for taking the time and stepping up to be the very first in the 45th guest. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.